Hey, I'm Ryan Lagarde. And I'm Craig Tovey. And welcome to Storytime with Ryan Lagarde. And Craig Tovey. Remember, for photos and shout-outs, go to our Instagram. Or visit our website, RyanandCraig.com. You can watch all of our read alouds there. Or send us a message. I have a message. Craig. I want to give a big shout-out to Mrs. Reagan's second grade class in Topsfield, Massachusetts for sending in today's book. Thanks so much, guys. We can't wait to read it because today's book is... <gasps> The, the True Story, story of, of the Three, three Little pigs, pigs by John Sheska, illustrated by Lane Smith. Let's get started. Whee! I can't do it. Well, it's like hooves. What is, oh. They're pigs. Oh, are, like that. Pigs are a cloven footed animal. What? The, the True story, story of the Three Little Pigs, pigs by John Sheska, illustrated by Lane Smith. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story, because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies and sheep and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think they were big and bad too. Okay. <laughs> okay, wow. Mr. Wolf. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Oh, just so, oh, so convenient yeah. that you happen to like eating cute animals. That's a nice justification. But you know what? We know you like to huff. We know you like to puff. And we know you like to blow houses down. At least two. Mm-hmm. You're not fooling us. We will not be tricked by you. Yeah, thanks very much. Sarcastically, thank you. Yeah, that's how you tell someone you're being sarcastic, as you say. Sarcastically? Thank you. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. A sneeze plus B sugar. This is the real story. Way back in once upon a time time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. Okay. okay. Yeah. You're not fooling us. No. Nope. Your dear old granny? Oh, you mean the one who ate Red Riding Hood? Yeah. Is it the same one? Because I happen to see that there's a bunny in your cake batter. Oh, you conveniently left that out that I'm cooking a birthday cake full of bunny. Yeah. You're not tricking us, Mr. Big Bad Wolf. We're not fooled. Take that story on down the road. Boop, boop. Thank you. Thank you. Sarcastically. Thank you. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig, and he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? So of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house, so I called, Little pig, little pig, are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt a sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed, and I snuffed. And I sneezed a great sneeze. Oh. Okay. Very convenient. I just happened to have a sneeze that blew over an entire house. And what's this snuffing? Yeah, what even is that? Yeah, we know what happened. You huffed and then you puffed. Don't try and throw us off your trail by introducing some new weird word like snuff. Yeah, because it's not real and you're not going to trick us. So take that on down the road, okay? Boop, boop. Thank you. Thank you. Sarcastically. Thank you. And you know what? The whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig, dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seemed like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw. So I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. 
I was feeling a little better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called, Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back, Go away, wolf. You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny chin chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed and I snuffed and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor. Okay. <laughs> Wolf's honor? Not a thing. Not a thing. Mm -mm. Remember how he ate that other pig and he was just like, think of it like a cheeseburger. That is a life. Yeah. Remember he's just saying dead as a doornail? That is showing no remorse. Just, just in passing. We're not buying any of this. You take that story on down the road, pal. Boop, boop. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you so thank much. Thank you. We really mean it. Thank we you don't. for this story. Sarcasm. Thank you. Now you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called. Mr. Pig! Mr. Pig, are you in? And do you know what that rude little porker answered? Get out of here, wolf! Don't bother me again! Talk about impolite! He probably had a whole sack full of sugar, and he wouldn't give me even one little cup for my dear, sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig. I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. I huffed, and I snuffed, and I sneezed once again. Then, the third little pig yelled, And your old granny can sit on a pin. Now, I'm usually a pretty calm fellow, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course I was trying to break down this pig's door. And the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. Oh, oh, I was just, it's just a misunderstanding, officer. I know you saw me huffing and puffing, but I was also snuffing. Oh, yeah, by the way, he dropped the snuffing and now it's puffing. Yeah. Uh, inconsistencies in your story, buddy. Not gonna be good in a court of law, my man. Yes, yeah, so you take this whole song and dance, you know where you take it? On down the road. Boop, boop. Thank you. Thank you. Sarcasm. Thank you. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the story with all that huff and puff and blow your house down. And they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you could loan me a cup of sugar? Okay. Okay. Yeah, a likely story. Yeah, but look who's behind bars. Yeah, and why do you need a cup of sugar still? Actually, this brings up my point, Craig. I have a huge problem with Wolf Jail. It's way too cushy. Why are they letting them bake? Let me tell you the things about Wolf Jail. I have a list. Number one, Wolf Jail. Too cushy. Number two, they still let them howl. At the moon. What'd the moon do to wolves? Also, anyone? Yeah, let's let's anyone pick this story up uh, on Ryan's blog. <laughs> the, the True Story of the Three Little Pigs by John Sheska, illustrated by Lane Smith. 